I have a very odd piston to show you. This one is out of a two-stroke, air-cooled, two-cylinder bike that shares the same combustion chamber. They called it Twingle. This is out of a Sears, 1966 Sears motorcycle, but it was manufactured by Pook, the Austrian motorcycle company. So needless to say, they're kind of hard to find. There's one company that I tried to order a piston from, and they wasted my time for over six months, and uh, I decided that I'm going to make it myself. So, deep, dark rabbit hole that I have started here. I wanted to show you where I've gotten so far. The first thing to do is, fortunately for me, I had two pistons because it's a twin, and I was able to cut one down to get some cross-section, an idea of what I need to make a core for the inside of the casting. All the measurements are then transferred to a drawing, which I have here. Uh, this is the outside diameter of the piston. It's going to be my finished. I'm actually adding one and a half millimeters to the outside diameter, but that's going to be all done in the machining process. The main thing here is to have a basic idea of where your sizes are in case something happens to the piston, then you have these measurements. And you don't have to go get the measurements again. You've got them all here. Hole diameter, hole location, those are important. Uh, this core drawing is for the first step of making the piston molds, which I'll show you next. Here's a cross-sectional of the t looking down of where these little supports are for a uh, pin in the ring lands. Uh, another one here where two pins catch. And then the tapers, five degree tapers, so that you can pull the two-part molds away from each other without the sand crumbling. So here's what I came up with. These were first bored all the way through to the smallest diameter on my metal lathe, uh, tapered, as you can see, a gradual taper. And in this piston, you can see that another taper starts. So following the measurements, I did that all the way through. Then I capped it and have built this up with baking soda and super glue. Amazing, because it's so forgiving. While it's still kind of soft, you can carve it real easily with a Dremel tool. Put the pieces together, pull them apart. It's I've probably got 10 hours in just these inner molds. Um, the super glue does a good job of filling the, the gaps, like cracks, to make smooth radiuses. It never hurts to overdo it because you can remove metal. And this, this is a negative image, so any place that you have extra is where you're going to have extra aluminum. Uh, there's a line in here, which I'll point at, and that is the support or rib, and that's just built up in super glue and baking soda. So these go together in two halves, and I've screwed them together, and then I ram silicone and or, uh, sodium silicate and silicone sand, silica sand, into this mold, packing it, and then I'll show you what the core would look like after it comes out. I've actually, uh, this is the first one I ever did. Um, so I've, I play with this one. The others are back in CO2 curing until I'm ready to pour. Uh, but you can see not a lot of detail. Uh, I think I learned really that you want to pack it as little as possible, but make sure it's firm around the edges. This is just play sand too. So you're going to have a rough, rough shape and, um, that's okay. It's the basic idea I'm trying to get here is proof of concept.